Hi everyone. In our last video, we profiled the plant equipment table in Snowflake and derived insights about its columns. Profiling helped us identify patterns and anomalies. Today, we'll take those findings and turn them into actionable data quality rules. Why are the DQ rules important? Because they ensure your data meets business requirements and remains trustworthy. Profiling helps us understand data characteristics, while DQ rules enforce data quality standards and checks. When do these steps apply? These steps are iterative throughout the data lifecycle, but are critical during the data validation or QA phase, especially in data migration or enhancement projects. I'll make a focused video on different types of data projects highlighting their significance. All right, now that you understand why these steps are important and when they should be applied, let's dive into our main topic, how to create data quality rules based on profiling insights. Here's a simple breakdown of the process. Step one, review profiling insights. Step two, define business requirements. Step three, Create DQ rules using SQL queries. Now let's follow the steps for each column we profile from plant equipment table. Please make sure to watch the data profiling video if you haven't already, because it is the prerequisite for our today's topic. Okay, let's get to the first column, equipment ID. What's our step one? Review profiling insights. From the profiling result of equipment ID column, we found that it has no nulls and unique values match the total row count. This tells us equipment ID is a unique identifier and both nulls and duplicates are not expected out of it. With these profiling insights, let's get to the step two, define business requirements. Equipment ID must always be unique it must never be null. Simple and straight, right? Okay, time for step three. Create the data quality rules using SQL queries. Now let's write the SQL queries on Snowflake for the business requirements that we just defined. Let's have our business requirements here. Now it's time to build the SQL queries. First one, equipment ID must always be unique. So we need to write a query that detects duplicates. Let's place the name in the editor. Equipment ID comma count star. From the table, group by equipment ID having count star greater than one. It returns records if more than one equipment ID is found in the data. Let's execute this. Since we don't have any duplicate in this table, it returned no results. But this is the query that has to be applied on the ongoing data to identify any duplicates and to ensure this column is unique. We have another one to ensure completeness. That is equipment ID must never be null. Let's have this here. So we are selecting the count if equipment ID is null. As long as it returns no records, there is no anomaly with respect to this column. Let's execute it. See, the count is zero. You might be thinking, we just know from the same table that the count is already zero and why we are applying to ensure it is zero again. Like I mentioned before, these queries will be applied on the ongoing data or as and when the new data loads to the table. So we profile the existing data in the production. Based on the profiling insights, we create these rules and apply on the new data that is loaded into the table. So that way, we ensure the data quality from various dimensions like uniqueness dimension, completeness dimension, whichever dimensions are applicable to that specific column. 
Let's move to the next column, location. We're going to review profiling insights first. The location column contains some nulls. It's not unique as multiple equipment entries can share the same location. Also, profiling revealed that nulls occur for either retired or partner managed equipment. Based on these insights, now let's define business requirements. For active, non-partner managed equipment, location column must be not null. For other cases, example retired or partner managed equipment, location is null. Now let's get on Snowflake to create these DQ rules. Open Snowflake and have the requirements handy. These are the two requirements that we just defined. Let's begin with first SQL query for the first requirement. Let's paste the table name here. Select star from plant equipment where see active and non-partner managed equipment, right? Active stays in which column? Status column. If you want to quickly see the data, so where do you have the active? Under status column, right? So where status is active and non-partner managed equipment. That means partner managed equal to false. For that location must be not null. So how do you want to identify if the location is null? Just add that filter here. Location is null. Let's execute it. It fetched a record. That means this could be an anomaly that needs further investigation. And this comes under completeness rule. Let's get to the second requirement for other cases. That means retired or partner managed equipment, right? Location is null. So what we understand is if partner managed is equal to true, then location would be null. Since the condition is or retired or partner managed, even if I add one condition that is partner managed equal to true, the location is expected to be null. So that's why I have added a negative condition. If the expectation is null, then I'm adding not null condition. If the expectation is not null, then I'm adding null condition opposite to what we expect here. So that way it's easy for us to catch if there are any discrepancies. See the query produced no results. That means there is no anomaly for this condition. So we have got the two rules created for these two business requirements. So far, we have created data quality rules for two columns, equipment ID and location. Now it's your turn. Try creating DQ rules for the remaining columns, partner managed and retired date using the steps we discussed. Profiling queries for these columns were already covered in the previous video. So feel free to refer to it for guidance. Once you have built your queries, share your results or questions in the comments below. See you in the next one.